In this video, we're going to be working with the technologies discussed in exercise 9.1 of the book in chapter 9, creating multiple file groups. Now, the exercise is written in generic language, allowing you to implement the steps using any database that you choose. We're going to use a very basic database called Sales that currently has no tables in it, and we're going to use this to go through the process of creating multiple file groups, placing files in file groups, and then placing objects in those files in the file groups. So let's begin by looking at the properties of the Sales database. We'll right-click it and simply choose Properties. Now we want to go to the File Groups page, and what you'll notice is that there's a primary file group, which is the typical starting point for any database. In order to have more than one file group, of course, we have to add one. So we'll simply click on Add and give it a name. We'll call this one Customers. And then we'll add another file group, and we'll call it Orders. Now, notice some of the different properties that we have for these file groups. We have a read-only property. This allows you to create a file group, place data tables in the file group, and indicate that it's read-only. This will keep you from modifying those static tables if you desire to. You can also set a file group to the default. Now, what that means is simply that as you create new objects, if you do not specify the file group into which the object should be placed, it will be placed in the default file group. So as we create tables, we'll see that they will continue to be placed in the primary file group because it is the default. For now, you can see here that there are zero files in both the customers and the orders file group. Now remember from the book that a file group can contain one or more files. And if there are multiple files in the file group, it can stripe the data across those files potentially giving you a performance gain depending on the file structure, how they're stored, on what physical volumes they're stored, and things of that sort. So we now have two separate file groups. This would allow us to keep all of our customer-related tables in one file group, all of our order-related tables in another file group, and then we could back them up and do maintenance on them separately as different file groups if we chose to. It is very important, of course, to keep in mind in such scenarios the relationships that may exist between the tables in the customer's file group and the tables in the orders file group. So let's see how we actually place a file in the file group. We'll go to the files page and here we need to add a new file. So we'll add a file and we'll give it a logical name of customers. And notice here in the third column we can change it from the primary file group to the customers file group. Now if we scroll further to the right you can also see that we can change the path, the actual storage location. And it is quite common to do so when you're creating multiple file groups. You'll have some of the files on one drive and other files on another drive. That is, if you're creating the multiple file groups more for performance reasons as far as data I.O. on the drive than for simple separation of administration purposes, such as doing backups at different times. We'll scroll back to the left now. And simply note that we could add another file to each of these file groups and even three or four files for that matter. Now I'll go ahead and click on Add again, and this time we'll give it a logical name of Orders, and you guessed it, we'll place it in the Orders file group. And now we can simply click OK to complete our changes. If we go back into the properties of the database by right-clicking and selecting Properties, you will be able to see now that we do indeed have three file groups, and each file group has at least one file. And on the Files page, we can see the different files in the different file groups and the different sizes of those files. Let's click OK. Now we're going to begin the process of creating a table just so you can see in this exercise how you place a table into a specific file group. So I'm going to expand my Tables node of the database, right click and choose New Table. Here we can see in the Properties window which, if it is not displayed, you can display by pressing F4. So if we close down the Properties window and then press F4, you can see it comes right back again. You can also go to the View menu, and from there, you can actually choose Properties window in order to display the window in that way. With the Properties window displayed, you can see the name of the table, the description of the table, 
the schema to which it belongs, which is DBO by default. But then here at the bottom, in the latter half, you can expand the regular data space specification section. And you will notice there's a file group or partition scheme name. And here I can choose the other file groups that I've created. So I could place this table onto the customer's file group if I so desired. When you do this, you have the ability to have some tables in your database in one file group, other tables in your database in yet another file group, and still other tables in yet another file group. The end result is that you could have the tables of a single database spread across multiple physical volumes within your server. This can give you a significant performance boost. It can also accommodate for larger databases that won't fit on smaller drive spaces, and it gives you flexibility in some backup scenarios.